For those who don't know my story, when I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with Tourette's and I was on medication for almost 10 years. When I was 21, I learned something called The Secret and I came off the medication overnight against everyone telling me to stay on it and I had a spiritual awakening. I meditated for three weeks straight and my Tourette's disappeared and I created the podcast to simply preach about everything that most people have in their head but no one ever speaks about, which is what the twitching was. It was too many thoughts inside my head and now I have a platform where I can speak to people and they can get out what's in their head i have just launched my first course and it's called take control and it's basically the system that i went through when i was 21 and i had my awakening it's the same system that i've done for my parents and the close friends and family members and it's changed their life individual steps that we don't see as much but when you put it together as part of a life that you have to maintain and manage it's life-changing so check out the course um and if you feel inclined to buy it buy it i reckon that it will really change your life if you're going for a spiritual awakening because i once was and these steps changed my life so if you go to talkwitholiver.com and you'll see that my course is there it's called take control if you buy it and go through it reach out to me on instagram and socials and let me know how you get on and what you thought of the course so if I could ask a massive favour from all my listeners, upon looking at my stats recently, it has occurred that out of a very humbling 730,000 downloads since I created the podcast back in 2019, that only 10% of you that listen have actually followed and subscribed to the podcast. If I could ask a massive favour from you all that listen, if you wouldn't mind just hitting that follow and subscribe button, it would mean more than you can imagine and it really does help the show grow and help reach more people in more ways than you and I can even imagine. The bigger the podcast gets, the bigger the guests get. And my aim is to grow the show big enough that I can reach out to amazing people like Russell Brand, Joe Dispenser, Lewis Howes, Grant Cardone, Joe Rogan, and have deep, intimate and vulnerable one-to-one conversations with them. I want to speak to the human side of people to show we're all the same when you get to the core, regardless of how much money or fame you have. Let's see. From the goddess, to like encouraging me to enter my consciousness, to enter the goddess head, and and so I did. And I think the pinnacle message from this experience was a high pitched feminine frequency that then I heard, which was like a T, so like a very high pitched feminine tone, and. Ooh. <laughs> that 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 was that that was not me. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, thanks Oliver for the sound effect. I appreciate that. And and I and after coming out of this experience, I felt like wow, this is the most profound experience I've ever had. And also, I feel like my mission is to help to emanate a feminine frequency in the universe. And that if we do that, it'll help to unite humanity. I feel like that was like the final message I received is that a feminine tone, like a frequency can like vib- help humanity vibrate higher and unite humanity. And that's part of why I'm here. So, uh, and then, you know, back to you asking me about how I received this new name, Arcturus. So when this name came for me, uh, and, and for those who joined us a little later, my given name was Daniel. Uh, but a, a few months ago, I had the flu and I felt like an intelligent alien civilization was speaking to me. I'd never had this happen before, but I that's what it felt like, some uh cosmic intelligence was speaking to me and they told me that my new name should be arcturus but as soon as that name came i also realized that there is this uh, alien civilization called the arcturians people who study and channel energy from alien civilizations see that they're uh, palladians the orions the andromedans and arcturians and so uh, and then separately, I, mean, I also saw that this uh, Arcturians are 
seen as like blue, uh, blue figures. And independently, a year before that, my friend who's a spiritual teacher in Hawaii was like channeling for me energies that she was receiving about me. And she said, I'm noticing blue, blue entities or blue uh, spirits around you. So I feel like there's a relationship on how everything here is connected. And to kind of bring one more point of connection here for us to tie it together is in monotheism in Judaism and Christianity, Islam, and the word in Judaism and Hebrew for God is Elohim. One of the words, there are multiple words for God, but Elohim is in the book of Genesis. And my first language is Hebrew. So in the first line in the Old Testament, it says, Bereshit bara Elohim, which means that in the beginning, God created the world. And in the 1970s, a French guy, right, somebody from France, uh, whose name now is Rael, he, changed, he also received a new name, Rael, he said that he received messages that Elohim, which is the Hebrew name for God, is actually uh, alien, a group of alien civilizations, I believe. And so, uh, you know, and for thousands of years, at least in the Western world, in monotheism, there's this been, been this belief that God created the universe. And then in the 1970s, and this new, this very small religion spawned where they, this French guy, Rael, channeled this message that uh, Elohim is actually a group of alien civilizations. And so he said something like, he believes that uh, a lot of people think that God created the whole universe. You know, God that created the whole universe is also what created life. But he thinks that Elohim, which is a group of alien civilizations, created life, but not necessarily the whole universe. And so they're, you know, sort of decoding, kind of putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. And I now, you know, I started out like I, my dad is a scientist and for most of my, and I studied science, I studied biology in college. I was uh, studying a lot of science. I was rational, logical. If you said the word soul or spirit to me 10 years ago, I would have kind of checked out of the conversation. Um, you know, it wasn't for me, but like seven years ago, I started going on this like more spiritual path. And I did ayahuasca uh, many times, you know, 42 times in the span of four years. And uh, now I'm like, okay, I'm trying to make sense of this reality. You know, goddess frequency, goddess energies, Elohim and alien civilizations, my new name, Arcturus. And I think, you know, my mission in life is world peace. So that's something I knew from a time when I was a kid. I felt like my uh, my mission in life is peace. And so I have this creation called World Peace Ceremony. And I think that, you know, there's a website, worldpeaceceremony.com. And having the right frequencies and energies of love and the right frequencies can help us all align and have the energies that we want. So, wow, that was a, a long, uh, I don't know, a rant that I don't know. I don't know how to, what else to say, but there you have it, Oliver. Well, what's coming to me when you say L-O-V is this song? That's what's coming to me. Don't know if there's any notes. I thought I'd share it in case there is. Friday today or whatever. Did you? Any relevance? Uh, I, I, I feel like when hearing that from you, I'm like standing up. I feel like dancing. I feel like lightening up. I feel like I don't want to be so like serious. 
you know, all the time. I want to like lighten the mood and like bring some magic and play. I play rhyming, fun, music. That's a vibe that feels good. I'm glad you brought that in because that's that's what I'm talking about too. Okay, so um, so see what what I've realised is you know people like you who are basically you throw energy all the time like me. I'm just doing me all the time. I see the world completely different to everyone else. And as a result of seeing the world differently, I'm like a dog going out for a walk. Every smell is exciting. Every smell is exciting. Whether I smelled before or not, it's exciting. I can't wait to kind of walk again to smell another smell. So when I'm out, I'm just in my own world, reading people, maybe thinking there's an alien in the sky, maybe there's a ghost in this house or whatever. And you know, the outside world is controlled by the environment, which is controlled by other people that are in control by the environment. So that's made up. So we're going to you and me just in our own little world doing ayahuasca, thinking about aliens and ancestors and what our name means as the vibration, when the vibration is from. This is a lot of nonsense that people don't think about. But what gives me the purpose of living life? Living with this fantasy, dream, idea, belief system whether it's real whether it's not it's so exciting it stimulates my own nervous system like when i hit the uh you know it just vibrates and just makes me excited like you know Ar articus whatever the name is you know that came to you for all you know thousands of years ago there was somebody called articus and he was a very woke wise person he vibrated on a very high frequency that in his day was extremely high compared to other people. Call it nine, vibration nine. Most people back then will be vibration one. As time evolves, we learn wisdom. Our energy increases. So now people these days have learned that and are nine, but we've increased our consciousness even more. So we're vibration, say, 52. So what's happening is, let's say that somebody back in the day was called Articus vibration nine. You've hit a frequency or uh, your energy is also mixed with the vibration of his energy, who is called Articus, and the energy is literally just merged into one. So now you're tuning in to his stream of consciousness, what he saw in his day, in the cave, in the sky, whatever, what he was thinking, what he was doing, and you're feeling that frequency as if it's your frequency. Now, as you say, all these things come from Latin and Hebrew, how did love go to Daniel or what was it? Daniel from Dana to whatever. It's like these vibrations don't even, they're not even, they don't even sound the same. But there's obviously a reason why that Daniel name went from Linguini. Yeah. Like, well, what did Linguini mean back then? And let's just say somebody was a priest or a goddess. That's a high frequency. People admire them. People worship them. People charge their energy towards them now they're called this linguini and for some reason it changed to daniel and here we are but that vibration of linguini would have been a very high frequency and um it's amazing how sounds just evolve and it's like well who was the person that called that person linguini what language did they have to call that person linguini what did linguini mean okay so they had to put together a language uh, put together a uh, a statement or a verse or some information to say, I'm going to call this person Linguini because this means this, but then they had to learn the language. And eventually it came back to being in the cave and just being hungry and smelling smells and going, hmm, he, 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 he. like, let's migrate. Hmm, let's go outside. Hmm, I'm hungry. Hmm, did you just fart? Hmm, do you want a shag? And then language just came from those sounds to Articus, to Daniel, to, to now. And it's just like this, long evolution of things it relates the fuck out of me nothing else matters politics doesn't matter what the neighbors doing doesn't matter if the dog shut on my lawn it doesn't matter because that alone is stimulating me making me feel fantastic um feeling fantastic is fantastic uh, it's great that you're feeling good and i'm here now 
in the present moment, looking at a bunch of water was calming my soul and spirit. And I'm seeing some trees and seeing some high rise buildings. I have this view here in Miami in Florida in the United States. And our environment also kind of nourishes our frequency and how we feel. And sometimes I've noticed that at times I lived like in a city for years, walking around buildings and not really going out into nature and picking up energy from so many other people around me, sort of tapping into the collective consciousness of the fears and joys and excitement and sadness and shame of all the people around me, but without noticing it. Like for most of my life, you know, I was like chasing outward, outward success, living a normal life. I you know, studied you know, high school and college, got a job, was trying to make money and be quote unquote successful and living in New York and San Francisco. And I think that frequency, I was, without really knowing it consciously, I was living in the frequency of fear and struggle, fear of, well, whatever I, the, the energy was fear and struggle to like make money, even though, you know, I was relatively well off, you know, and, but like, I wasn't living in that frequency. I was living in, and not really noticing the present moment, not noticing the energies that, that were influencing me. And, uh, you know, now I feel like way more spacious, but it's really this tuning of knowing what energies I want to let into my system. What energies do I want to influence me? Um, you know, and the, the scary thing about talking about it in this direction is sort of like this hyper individualistic thinking, because what about community? What about how do we have many humans feeling the good vibes? You know, maybe it's as easy, easy enough to go out to a party or go out, you know, to a festival. Uh, but even then, we don't always get exactly the energy that we thought we wanted. Always meeting us where our soul is, where we are in our soul evolution. And to kind of bring back kind of a few points from earlier, like what are we doing? What should we do? What's the purpose in life, the meaning? It's, I think for most of my life, I was thinking of my life as, uh, you know, like in my adult life, accomplishing things, achieving goals. Uh, and my transcendence initially happened when I tried to like transcend individual achievement goals, like making money or, you know, buying a house, things like the, the normal goals to doing like goals for society. Oh, I wanna, I wanna create world peace. I wanna create uh, more joy in the world. And it's like, that is like an initial level of transcendence from caring about my own goals to societal legacy. Uh, but then lately, really what I've seen is actually, I think soul evolution you know, I'm, I'm not this human body. I'm not this material meat body in, in this 3D world. I think each of us is really a soul. And so soul evolution, uh, evolving our soul is really, uh, it seems like that's what it's about. And like, if, what does soul evolution mean? I think it means raising our vibration. 
you know, back back to vibration. I, I think I don't think we're going to be able to escape the uh, <laughs> this topic of vibration and frequency. I think that's really the like seems to be the thread here is that everything is frequencies and energies, and even our soul evolution is about raising our vibration and uh, maybe following our highest excitement when we're in our highest excitement mm -hmm. and we follow the trail of what has us excited, we're more likely to discover synchronicities when things naturally fall into place, when you're thinking about the same person and, and you call each other, when you're thinking about the same word and you meet each other, uh, when, I don't know, you think about toothpaste and you see a truck driving by and it says toothpaste on it. I think those synchronicities happen when we are following our highest excitement, when we are on the right path, when our soul is doing its mission, when there's like an alignment in the universe between energies. And I feel like the soul evolution rising up to like higher beauty, higher frequency, more grace, more flow, it seems to be uh, what this universe wants. And, and now it's like, okay, so let's say we know this. I know that I, I like my soul to evolve. I would like to experience greater beauty. I would like to live in the moment and and experience bliss and even have like tears of joy. And it's like, well, okay, but what do I do? Well, it's almost like this question of choice and agency. We, we think we have choice and agency. It seems like in our Western world that when we say the word choice and the concept of agency that we make goals and we make plans and we uh, list out, let's say in, in our minds or on paper, here are the possibilities for what I want to do. Sometimes in our mind, it seems like we have choice on what, what we're doing, what we should be doing, what we could be doing. But even like all of those choices that occur to us in our mind, like where, where do they reside? Where are they coming? And actually that reminds me of like quantum possibilities. It's like each of us is like a quantum computer already able to compute all the possibilities in the universe. And just by having certain thoughts and saying certain words, we can say one word or a sentence and it will evoke something in the universe. It's as if we are like computer programmers inside this universe. And every thought that we have, or every word that we say can not only evoke and draw down and receive energy from the universe, but we can also then program our reality with our words, kind of like computer programmers use code to create software. And so then it's like, okay, so the like soul level, kind of putting it all together, there's like soul evolution, rising up a higher frequency. And then we still have this choice. Okay, where, where is choice coming from? I want to maybe choose the right words. I want to choose the right things to think about uh, that help me evolve. But then it's like, I'm not the only one here. It's like, oh, there's all of us here. Let's, what, what, how can we together like evolve together and create the highest frequency together how can we do it all together because our intention when we put our intention together towards one play as one future then it's way more powerful than each of us individually having our dreams and so that that's really i feel like in my transformational path, like uh, where I'm, I'm growing is like, okay, how can we 
have, let's start with a hundred people. Like let's have a hundred people have the same intention, you know, and, and that's maybe 10, 10 people first. Right. And it's like, this is, uh, you know, other than like writing now, I'm writing a book. Like I really want to do the, like, Hey, let's have like 10 people, a hundred people together imagine what we want, you know, imagine the same intention together. And, and that sometimes happens like in Burning Man, you feel like the most beautiful feeling is when 70,000 or 80,000 people all come together to the center of the city and everyone's intention is concentrated at the same time on the same thing in the city center. And, you know, thousands of years ago, this is how... This is how it used to be. The tribes would have, uh, you know, they would come together in the center of the village. And we kind of lost that with like corporations and capitalism. And, uh, but, it, but it actually still exists, like in Burning Man and some other places. Even, even the Chinese, you know, it's funny usage of the word even here, you'll see them up, but like, even the Chinese Communist Party has, it's like so impressive when they bring, you know, 70,000 people together. I, I'm impressed how everybody is like dancing in unison and working together. And uh, and the other part of my mind, I'm, I'm hearing like all the people talking about human rights uh, issues. And, you know, not, there's, doesn't seem like there's anything truly perfect out there other than the whole universe itself uh but you know yeah it's like soul evolution and let's do it together yeah <clears throat> just quickly before i continue um how long have you got by the way like what's your max time you've got uh i have some time my there's a timer here that like says, oh, six minutes, 30 seconds left. But no, yeah. I, have, I have some time. Yeah. Pretty sick. Yeah, uh, I can always increase it. But like, what, how long have you got max, would you say? 20, 15? Uh, how, how long do you, do you want to go? I can go another 30 minutes <laughs> if we need to. All right, let's just flow. So, yeah, what's coming to my mind when you're saying that is... I'm envisioning, you know, Stone Age or the pyramids, and I'm envisioning loads of people, massive, thousands of people, all chanting and focusing on, say, a massive rock that they're trying to move, a massive boulder. And this this rock, eventually, it's starting to vibrate, and it's starting to move, it's starting to hover. As everyone's looking at that rock, meditating, saying a certain sound vibration, like, move 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 the rocks vibrate and now everyone's pushing the rock so my stone edge they move these rocks maybe something similar i have massive massive uh a bamboo stick like a didgeridoo and everyone's going like imagine fucking seventy thousand people making that noise the vibration of that will make anything move the same as my my bowl this okay it's the same thing when i ting it and i move it around i'm increasing the vibration of it and the more i go around it the more i enhance it imagine that as you say a bun a burning festival whatever you've got one person feeling a certain way saying a certain thing and then there's seven people doing it i mean that obviously is fucking incredible and you literally would have the ability you make things move like telekinesis it just it's all, it's, it's all per, perfect sense it's all science telekinesis the bigger form of moving the, the the pyramid or moving the uh the rock and you know you go back in time and massive 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 caves and under, uh, underwater city these are massive massive rocks you know like there was a reason that they had to have got them there somehow you know as far as we know they didn't have the same machinery we had but when you understand vibration, how it can make literally planets break apart, you know, a vibration can make the earth crust split. Well, the earth is a rock. So if you think that 
vibration can make the earth split of course it can make a rock move or you know stonehenge move you know lots of people vibrating and moving that rock you're going to be able to move it across the fucking world when you understand the power of the the frequencies um yeah yeah i heard you say before uh like burning festival and i'm not sure do you are you do you know about burning man the burning man movement i mean i've heard, I've heard of it like a massive festival in the desert i think isn't it yeah yeah okay yeah yeah it's uh you know from all the different things i've done in my life i, I definitely think like ayahuasca and burning man are like in the top definitely like in the top uh three four five like burning man is like yeah that is like the number one kind of gathering of humans and it exists already in like 35 or 40 cities around the world the main one is in nevada 